we're just giving Ricky time to get organized so we get to give him a minute. Okay, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals for Tuesday, September 13th. Um, I am Janice Tatarka. I am joined by other board members, Joan Cromwell, Marilyn Vega Torres, Joe Mahoney, and Hugo Perdomo, and of course, the ever necessary John DePriest and Hector Velez. So we are going to be taking today's cases in order. And as I have reminded everybody to speak in the microphone, as now I am doing, um, as I... So we're going to start with 2022-12, 275 Washington AF, Margolin Grace, special permit and variance is seeking approval for the demolition of a three-family residential structure and the construction of a six-unit dwelling structure, which does not meet the current minimum zoning re regulations for front yard setback and minimum yard setback, we, lot set size, sorry. We heard this last month. It did not get heard at the planning board, but we will be voting, if it is the will of the board, we'll be voting on this today. John, do you have some comment you wanted to make? Uh, just to say, it, it did go to the planning board for one meeting, but uh, they did not meet the second time. They did not, okay. So um, who's here to speak on this? And remember to speak in the microphone, and please just update us, remind us again what it is. And this is still a public hearing, and uh, if people are here to comment on this, they will have the opportunity to speak to it. Great, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. DePriest. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago in Toscana with a business address of 11 Beacon Street here on behalf of Marjolyn Gase, who's also uh, the applicant but the architect on the project as well. Um, just to refresh everyone's memory of the project, um, the proposal is to raise an existing uninhabitable three-family uh, dwelling at 275 Washington Ave and to erect a new six-family residential condominium building with 12 interior parking spaces. Um, this lot size is an exceptional, exceptionally large lot for this particular area. It's 9,900 square feet, and this uh, building, uh, proposed building, shows the contours of it. If you go to the next slide, please. Well, well Johnson. Oh, right Johnson. Here. Um, He'll be right as here. he does that, um, the He's topography. Sure the door stays open. <laughs> the topography of this lot is very deep, too. It's set um, far back as well. Um, the uh, vehicular entry will be at grade, and as the hill slopes back, all of those spaces will actually be inside and covered um, by the building without raising the height. So we're going to match the height. Let's just John. Let's have John find this for us so that oh, we sure. your your words match our pictures. Uh, I'm sorry, which one? The, the one. Uh, yep. Presentation. So this is the this is a rendering of the proposed building um, after if it was to be approved and completed. Um, you can see garage parking at that at grade at ground level and the units above it. Um, we have plenty of open space, which we'll show you as we get into some more slides as well. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, and then we just have some surrounding existing conditions and surrounding context um, of the area. There is multifamily in and around this area, so it's not something that is unique. There's a six unit, a larger six unit right across the street from us uh, and multifamily around there. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then again, just to show we kept at that um, height of the existing structures. That was important. And we also, in doing so, minimized the uh, variances that we were requesting. So we are requesting for use, um, minimum lot size, and minimum lot size per dwelling unit. Uh, originally, we did have a minimum front yard violation, and we were able to rework the plans to remove that violation. That, are, you, are you agreeing with John? Okay. Uh, next slide, please, John. Uh, and again, a uh, panoramic view just from the back so you can see, and then more contextual um, up Washington Ave. Uh, next slide, please. This just shows you um, sort of the existing conditions of the building that have gone into disrepair over the years. John, um, they, they, he originally indicated that this was uninhabitable. I know that you've done a recent tour of that. What is your assessment? Uh, these pictures make it look good. Okay, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's as bad as they say it is. Okay. Yeah. There is water damage, mold, and rot, um, and now falling into state of disrepair. There, there are holes in the wall, holes yeah. in the ceiling. There are uh, stairs that are dangerous to walk up and down. The stairs in no way meet any code. 
the, room, the house was just split up into smaller units in no organized way, and uh, the rooms are just too small to really deal with. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, next slide, please, Sean. So this just shows you, and I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Marjolyn to go over his plans, but um, all of these units are three bedroom, two baths, so we wanted to build family sized units uh, on this particular lot. The building as it stands now has very small and workable units, um, the way it's compromised. So at this point I can turn it over uh, to Marjolyn to go over his plans. Good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Marjolyn Gase and uh, I am uh, part owner, also the architect for the project. Um, we, uh, the proposed structure uh, meets most, uh, almost all of the zoning requirements for the area with the exception of them as uh, Jeff said of the minimum uh, lot size and the minimum uh, lot size requirement per dwelling unit. Uh, we were able to eliminate some of the um, projection violations that, we, that were pointed out before in the previous meeting. Uh, and that was uh, the two decks that you see in the front. They, uh, we had shown them as two foot six into the lot, but per requirements of section 34.78, they can project only two feet and they have to be 10 feet apart and they cannot be larger than 10 feet. So we, we comply with all of those requirements now. And the second one was the canopy over the main entry, uh, which um, we have it at, an five feet or less from the property line as required for that section. So we will not be requiring a relief on that. Okay. We're providing 10 foot uh, side setbacks and then uh, the rear setbacks are, as you can see, there is plenty of room and we're keeping the, the building way off um, uh, from where it is. We're also pushing it a little bit out of the hill so that you can see how it overlaps with the existing. So it's more or less the same depth, it's just wider and takes advantage of the width of the lot. Um, I would say, uh, other than that, I think we comply with most of the, uh, the requirement. Uh, I would like to talk very briefly about the design of the units that Jeff mentioned, so next slide. Um, you see here on the, on the left that there are uh, two units per level, three bedroom, two bath, or three bedroom, two and a half, depending. I think we're gonna see what the market demands, and we're gonna look at some more comps before we finalize that. But what you see there is like two bedroom, I'm sorry, three bedroom, three bath right now. So it may be three bedroom, two bath in a den or an office or And that you know, doesn't, because it's the bedrooms, that doesn't impact their parking. It doesn't matter if their bathrooms are two or two and a half. That's yeah, how they the, the parking. Uh, no, if, if they reduce the number of parking, uh, the number of bedrooms, they will need fewer spaces. Okay, but they're, okay, all right. Yes, so, so we're just talking about bathroom versus providing like a home office or a, or a den, which you know, lately has become a, a must have on pretty much most of the units given the pandemic. Uh, on the right, you see how we're resolving the, the parking um, and we're providing uh, at, at three bedrooms per apartment, six units, uh, we are required to provide 12 and then we are providing all, all, of, uh, all 12 of them. Um, we're providing an elevator and we're providing some utility space that you see colored in blue on the top right and top left corner. A and we're hoping that once we resolve the building utilities, some of the, the rest of the area will, will be used for uh, building, uh, for the trash management, and then the rest will be used as a storage unit for uh, the, the habitants. You're gonna need to be prepared to tell us how you manage trash. Uh, okay. Okay, just when that will be, I have no doubt that will be a question okay. that will come from the board. All right. Um, and then John, if I can, uh, very briefly talk about how we came up with the design. So we looked up and down the Washington Street, most of the houses there are on our, are on our side of the street. Um, and if you look at it, we, we kind of identified the, the building widths of different uh, houses along the street. We tried to use that module uh, on, you know, creating the ins and outs and the subdivision of our uh, building, the proposed building. So you can see more or less that you know we're trying to we're trying to break the mass um, and then create more or less some of the same proportions and the size of uh, perception of size of the buildings that are adjacent to our um, building. You can see that the height were more or less uh, as across the street, and um, but you know different from the other. Um, properties along the street, we're trying to create a more friendly pedestrian environment. So we're creating some 
landscape ground floor, which none of these other properties have, because you have to go usually about eight to 10 feet up uh, from the street level before you get to the front door. Uh, so we're proposing some sort of a landscaped front patio, which, you know, um, kind of, it is, um, it takes you to the uh, front door. Um, and then this is um, the, de the design of the elevations. We've been trying to look at the materials that are up and down the street. They are mostly clapboard and or um, uh, panelized construction uh, for as, as a, uh, sorry, as building cladding. So we're trying to uh, I reinterpret those, you know, use the same kind of material palette that's what's on the street, but uh, trying to interpret that in a contemporary way, more in line with um, the, the the building that we're trying to uh, to build, uh, we are trying to provide this floor uh, floor to ceiling windows, uh, which would bring an uh, incredible amount of light into the units and also take advantage of the views. Because as you get up to the second and third level, you can have some really great views of the downtown Boston and or Cambridge area. So we're trying to take advantage of that by providing the maximum amount of glazing that you can provide. We are also providing two really generous 100 square foot decks so that they can st extend the inside living room into the uh, exterior and make it an exterior living room. It is out of the 10 foot depth that it is, eight feet is covered so that you can actually put some seating and enjoy it whether it's a rainy day or a sunny day. Uh, or a sunny day. Um, this uh, shows the side elevations, also shows the topography that we're working <coughs> with. So we're trying to cut into the um, to the hill, provide um, a parking level that is buried on three sides, uh, and then you have three levels of uh, residential units up above. Uh, John, if you can go to the next slide, I think we have a couple of axonometric views and some street views, as you would perceive it uh, if you walk uh, north or south on Washington Street. Okay, and so the question um, is the door, is the, can the garage door, does it have, can it go two ways or just one way? Uh, we have it as one way. I think given how busy the Washington Street is, we're thinking that, and given the amount of parking, that's only 12 parking spaces, that I don't think it's necessary to provide a two-way parking entrance. We probably want either one car entering at a time or one car exiting at a time, uh, given how tight Washington Street is, and then it's the users come in and out of there we thought it would be safer to have a smaller entry and then, um, and then, you know, most of the people that will live here will get used to it. So like, you know, if they see the, the, the door is open, they'll probably stop before they get in or they will probably stop before they get out. Um, just, an, uh, you know, as I said, we try to use the, the traditional materials, but in a contemporary way. And I think this cornice that we're providing on the top, which connects both structures, it's meant to mimic the, the mansard roofs that you see all up and down the street. And then the decks, the way they are positioned, they're also meant to break the building mass into the modules of the houses that are adjacent to it. And that's how we approach the design of this. Somebody uh, has their phones. Could you please put them on, put them off? Thanks. I think that's it. Yeah. You too, John. <laughs> I think with that, I think this concludes our pre my presentation. We'd welcome any questions. You Is there any lighting on the outside of, the, of um, Washington's, on the Washington side? Yes, John, uh, John, that was one of the requests that John had included on his report initially. So, so John, if you can go to that C3 drawing you had before, uh, the, the, the two the drawings floor. that I sent you today. So it's that C3, John requested, uh, like a concept plan for the landscape and, and the lighting. So you can see here that along that um, egress path on the left, uh, that we're, we're providing some wall sconces that will provide enough, uh, at least the minimum amount of light that's required for uh, light and an egress path. Uh, all these light fixtures that are located on the building side will be equipped with a uh, light control so that uh, to control the light trespass so that it doesn't go over the property line. Uh, we're providing two wall lights at the corner there so that they can uh, provide lighting for the usable open space on the, on the northwest corner. 
and we're pro at the building entry, we're providing two walls consists and an overhead um, recessed light, which is uh, embedded in the canopy. There's any bike racks inside the, in the garage, a bicycle rack? We have not uh, accommodated yet, but there are, uh, there, there are uh, those corners that you see that we can uh, probably accommodate a couple of bike racks. We're hoping to give, once we've located all the other utilities, we're hoping to see how many storage units we can give to each of the occupants, you know, hopefully six, and then that can use it to hold the bike or maybe, uh, you know, use it for whatever to store, whatever they want. Um, how long do you think this project will be you know, complete? Uh, a couple of years? How long do you think will be? To build? W I'm sorry. No, how long do you think that you will complete or you will done this project? Uh, we're hoping within a year. In a year? Uh, once we break ground, of course. With regards to the uh, garage entry and uh, the pedestrian, the street walkway and all, what type of signage to alert <coughs> the people, cars coming in, cars coming out? We can put an audible alarm so that you know you notice five people that are people are uh, are driving out or in, uh, and I think that can be activated once the garage door opens. And I believe that came up <coughs> at the last hearing. I think Billy mentioned that, and we had said we can make it you know, light up and a, not, not too loud of a sound, but loud enough that pedestrians. And loud enough to alert the people that are. Um. Other question? John, before we open it up to the public, does the planning department have any comments? Um, the planning uh, department recommends a number of conditions. Um, the standard conditions as applicable, uh, no rentals less than 12 months, uh, design review, um, uh, community improvement trust fund payment is going to be required. All outside lighting be dark sky compliant. Uh, the curb cut be designed so that the, the sidewalk is flush across. And then signage to alert pedestrians that vehicles are exiting from the garage. I don't know if Hugo has wanted to put a condition relative to the bike racks or not. Thank you. So I'm going to open this up to the public. Oh, I'm sorry, Joan. Speak into your microphone, please. Oh, okay. Um, are these condominiums or rental units? The intent right now for them is to be condominiums. Okay. And any of, are any affordable units? Not at this time. Because there's six, right? Because there's six, yeah. yes. Okay. And um, I was just thinking about 275. So that's on, well, both sides of parking. And... It's always hidden coming in and out on Washington Ave on that side. It's just jam-packed as it is. So um, I think it's a good thing for signage, but I'm wondering if they'd even see the signage where it's just so condensed um, with parking there. I wonder, I was just thinking about what that, so you said it's more of like an alarm system that it, like a beep, beep. It would be like yeah. uh, both an alarm and probably some visual light like mm. you know, on top of the uh, garage door. Uh, but I think the idea is that, you know, we're taking one parking spot from the street, but we're providing 12 covered mm -hmm. parking. So I think within that 12 feet and, and change, you'll probably, we'll probably put a sign so that people don't block the driveway, but you know, you'll probably have like three feet on either side so that yeah. people cannot park. Um, but then once, so I think that will allow them enough visual field so that when they exit um, the garage that they do it in a safe way. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to open, is it okay? Open for the public. Is this is going to be the last opportunity you will have to speak on this matter? Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? There being none, I'm going to close the public participation, or the public hearing portion of this hearing, and I'm going to ask the petitioners to go through the variance requirements for us, sure. please. My favorite thing. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through them one at a time. Um, John, and let's be clear, so we're talking about minimum lot size. That is our primarily the one we are dealing with at this point. Uh, minimum lot size on minimum lot size per unit. Per, okay, so either way, minimum lot size, okay. The variance is sought because of soil conditions, shape or topography of such land or structure and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. 
describe the condition. Yeah. Please okay. explain. See, how, see okay. if we agree that you can sure. meet that re requirement. So the, right. So the subject lot is large and it's sloped. Um, the design of the project incorporates access to the proposed parking at grade, uh, which becomes below grade as you move further back on the lot. The topography of the lot allows for a project that contains adequate parking, but is also designed in a ma manner that is consistent with the heights of the surrounding properties. Uh, additionally, it, the lot size is capable of accommodating six units without varying much from the code and by way of variances. Yes, no? Yes? Oh, wish no. Yes? Okay, two. A literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. Um, so the, the subject lot is larger, as mentioned, and can accommodate the proposed use with limited zoning relief. Rejecting the proposal based solely on the total lot size would cause substantial hardship for the petitioner and prevent needed residential units. The existing structure as it stands is in need of substantial repair and the cost to preserve it and bring it up to code, erect an addition onto the existing structure to create new needed units or erect a new building without this number of units would be cost prohibitive to the applicant. Third, desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. The proposal has been designed to fit within the character of the neighborhood. There are other multifamily residential buildings in this neighborhood, including an eight unit building across the street from us. The proposal includes ample parking, usable open space, decks, and does not exceed allowed lot coverage. This proposal is good for the public because it allows for needed residential family units without overwhelming the neighborhood. Yes. Yes. And last, desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. The project has been designed to meet almost all of the applicable zoning regulations and only needs minimal relief to erect the six residential units as described. That being said, we can now, is there, a, uh, is there an intent to vote on this tonight? And do I have a motion? I've got a question. Sure. Um, this, this is going to be a residential, this is going to be residential? Condominiums, yes. yes. Okay. Condominiums. As far as uh, no residential and then flipping it in a year to sale? It's, well, it's, it's condos. condos, it's meant to be condos. Oh. Okay. It's going to be condos. Okay, it's yes. going to be condos. Yeah. Okay. And then, no, <coughs> are they going to be affordable? No. No. They, no so there will be market rate. Okay. I, I have a question. Um, we didn't receive any communications from any of the abutters? No. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. 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 Do I have a motion? I make a motion. I make to? A motion. To approve. With the conditions that With John articulated? With the conditions articulated. that um, John just articulated. No bike rack, you go. Okay. Add a bike rack. Do I have a second? Joan? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Takes a while. Much. Hector will write it up. You'll take a. Can you give me a, a written copy of your response to the variance? Sure. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next one is 2022 1330 30 Hillside Ave, J. Duca. And this will. We won't be deciding on this today. This will be moving to the planning board, which is meeting on the 27th of this month, and will come back before us on October 11th. But this will, the, uh, you will have an opportunity to speak to this. <coughs> Sir, please introduce yourself and tell us about your petition. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Jay Duca. I'm speaking on behalf of Larry Meads, the owner of the property of 30 Hillside Avenue. As you can see by the picture, uh, what's standing there today, is a single story garage. Um, it's a pre existing non conforming structure in a residential neighborhood. Uh, we're seeking variances and special permit to change the use of the garage and the structure to a single family home that's uh, in more character with the neighborhood. Is that red or uh, is that Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's coming out red. Oh, it's okay. coming out. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. I was trying to fix it to see why it's coming out red, but I can't. I'm sorry, Mr. Duca. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, what you have before you is an amended copy of the original plan that I submitted uh, a few weeks ago, and I want to thank you, by the way, 
for allowing us to continue for a couple of months while we uh, worked some concerns out with a neighbor who is here tonight who will speak uh, when, uh, when we're through here. Um, next slide, please. The hardship, uh, as you can see, the structure is at the front of the lot line. It's pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, the lot slopes downhill. Uh, the hardship is to build a, new ho build a new home, we'd have to put it up close to the lot line. There's no way we could really fit it anywhere else in the site. Um, the other hardship is um, the, uh, the topography of the site and the structure itself is the hardship. This is a unique hardship based solely for this lot. It's a, it's a pre-existing non-conforming garage that is uh, the only one in the neighborhood. It, it, it does not really belong in a residential neighborhood. Uh, the topography of the site is also, although it's not unique uh, completely with the site, the shape of the lot is also a hardship. Um, it, it's uh, unique in its uh, shape, unlike any other of the other lots in, in the neighborhood. So we're here tonight to ask for a uh, variance and a special permit. Next slide, please. Uh, this is more or less what the front of the building uh, is conceptually will look like. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the rear of the structure. Uh, we're using the same footprint of the garage, more or less. In the back of the structure, there's a 16 by 27 foot addition, um, some landscaping, which I'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through those slides uh, coming up. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll start off by showing an elevation view um, to give you some uh, idea of what the next slides, will, what floor we'll be talking about. The street grade line uh, carries from the street. Um, you've got floor one, floor two, and the attic floor. And then below the street line is a lower level one and lower level two to a walkout patio. What you see in red is what was proposed back in 2014. Uh, today we're here as a result of the meeting with the neighbor who's here tonight. Um, we've reduced the size of the structure. We've taken off the rear deck, the rear stairs and deck, and we've taken off a third story in the back. So we, we've come quite a distance um, from where we were in 2014. Um, we've also, uh, on the second story, we've reduced, over the garage, we've re reduced that whole floor over the garage. If you go back to the conceptuals for a minute, John, please. Um, on the front, yeah, or the, or the rear, yeah. You can see the garage, uh, originally we had a second story all the way over on the footprint, so that's, um, those are the reductions that we are here tonight. Um, so, continuing on. So, this is the first floor level. Now, could um, you go back, just went to where that, that one, the back or the front, not go back one more. Is that, a, is that meant to be a fence? That that's a low height picket fence, four foot picket okay, fence. Okay, yep. I just wanted to make sure that's what it's meant to be. Okay. It's pretty much the outline of the okay. uh, lot line. Uh, the first floor level is mostly half, of, almost half of it is taken up by a two, two car garage which is, is pretty much is existing there anyway. We're, um, the first floor has uh, two bedrooms, bathroom, laundry, uh, walk out to the garage and the stairs in the rear um, uh, go down to the lower level. The stairs on the front go up to the second floor level. The next slide, please. Second floor level is uh, living room, kitchen, dining room. It's got a roof deck, uh, which was also reduced in size. It used to be the whole size of the addition, 27 by 16. The dotted lines represent um, the reduction, the re elimination of uh, the rear stairs and deck. We had exterior stairs and decks. So the, the roof deck has been um, uh, uh, reduced in size. Um, as you can see, the garage, uh, that's the roof on the garage side. Uh, next slide, please. The attic floor uh, is a walk-up attic. It's got, it, to the underneath of the peak is about eight feet. It's not habitable. It's going to be heated space. Uh, the owner would like to keep uh, some precious possessions up there and he would like to keep it heated. There'll also be mechanical equipment, but there'll be no habitable space. Next slide, please. This is the lower level one. Um, as you can see, the stairs go down to a bedroom, which has its own bathroom. Uh, for convenience so that person doesn't have to go up to the next floor up to use the bathroom. Um, 
what you see is all filled. That would be, um, that's, it's all filled in the foundation. It's not habitable at all. Uh, next slide. Uh, oh, can we go back one more, please? Also, as you can see, the, the deck, the dotted line was removed and instead is a four foot balcony off the bedroom. Uh, next slide. This is the uh, lower level two. It's a game room. Um, it's got a toilet and a sink, no shower. Um, it's got a, a walkout patio that goes out to the backyard. Uh, next slide. This is just a conceptual of what the back would look like with the garage roof. Um, um, just to give an idea what the rear elevation looks like. Next slide. And front is the same elevation. I have two dorms in the front we added for architectural reasons. Uh, also to provide light and ventilation for the attic. And the reduction, you made it clear the second floor reduction. Is I'm sorry? And then you make, you're showing that where the second floor has been reduced. That, uh, yes, yeah. that dotted line, that used to be, uh, that was original, the original plan we had. Um, next slide, this is the uh, landscape plan. Um, there's 46 different various uh, arborvitae and love, love child um, uh, landscaping plants. These two trees, this is a large group of trees that are going to remain. These are the two large trees that are about 40 feet in height. Um, that are also going to oh, let me talk in the microphone. Oh. John, let me ask you a question. We don't, I mean, we often obviously have the planning department look at landscaping plans for big developments, but we generally don't approve a landscape plan for an individual home, do we? Yeah, that's we have you do. We? All right, okay, yeah. all right, I just want to be sure. I, I, I do review them for the board and I do make comments where I feel is appro okay. appropriate. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your question. Um, the act actually, we did this uh, landscape plan because I'm gonna segue into our stormwater management, uh, okay. which plays a part in that. Um, next slide, please. This is the existing conditions from uh, the civil engineer uh, showing the same lot. Uh, next slide. This is the stormwater and uh, re uh, stormwater plan, stormwater management plan. As you can see, there's two Caltech systems uh, I think you're all familiar with. Uh, this, uh, the stormwater plan is going to improve the stormwater management of this project by 30%. The reason for that is right now the stormwater is, is completely unmanaged uh, going downhill. Um, the stormwater in this plan will collect all the roof drains and patios. It will collect it and recharge. It'll be recharged into the ground instead of running off downhill. Uh, also, there's going to be uh, a lot of dead trees that are mostly four to two inches in diameter, uh, some of which are dead um, underbrush, will all be cleaned out and grass will be planted, um, which will help uh, manage uh, water runoff. Next slide. Uh, this is part of the stormwater from the plan, stormwater, and next slide is also uh, some uh, uh, utility plan. Next slide. Um, that's uh, pretty much my presentation. Um, just like to summarize. Um, in summary, we have a pre-existing non-conforming structure in use. It's unique to this particular zoning district. The hardship is the topography and the structure itself. Um, we do not create any new non-conformities with this plan. It meets um, uh, lot coverage, height, um, and it doesn't create any new non-conformities with respect to setbacks. It's basically utilizing the same uh, footprint. Uh, it fits the character of the neighborhood. It's not substantially more detrimental to the neighbors. Uh, it improves the stormwater management on the site. Um, and I will be glad to answer any questions. Board have any questions at this point? Joan? Joan? No? No. I I'm, okay. Yeah. No. No, go ahead. Well, I just had a question about the, the one bedroom that's on the lower level. Yep. The one bedroom, one bath. That's going to be part of the unit. It's not like an in-law. No. It's completely open and common. There's no, like, coming in on the lower level, there's no hall or any, okay. you know, it, you have to cohabitate in the, okay. in the building. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, as I said, this is um, going to open the public portion of this hearing. This will not be the only opportunity one has to speak on it. But is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this? Ah, please introduce yourself and speak at the Good microphone. Evening. Yes, my name is Constantinos Busios, and I own the property uh, that abuts the, this property. And I'm here in principle to support what uh, Mr. Duga has just presented. But I'm also here to discuss one more topic. So if you allow me, let me, let me uh, to allow one more for, uh, to discuss one more amendment that I would like to request. Go ahead. So let me first go back to a little bit in time. So this proposal, as Mr. Duca showed, uh, in 2014 it had been proposed, it was much larger than my next door neighbors were also abutting, uh, appealed it in court and they won the court case. And I sent you a letter a few, a few weeks ago, uh, like in the summer, uh, where I was uh, telling that story, where I was expressed through my lawyer actually, I was expressing that I'm willing to, to work with, uh, you know, to, to, to support if it is reduced size. Thankfully and gratefully, Mr. Duca has been very, very willing to work with me and address my concerns. Um, and uh, now we have this amended, uh, this amended design that's much more to, to my, my wife's liking. Uh, but there is one, one topic that I would like to bring, and unfortunately, it was something that had not been sitting well with me, and today, with the help of a friend, it just, you know, I knew what it was, okay. So basically, uh, my property is lower than, my backyard is to the low side of the backyard of, of uh, Mr. Duca mm -hmm. and Larry Meads, the owner's property. So uh, we're looking, especially when we're on our backyard, we're really looking up, and now, the, uh, the, the, the discussions we've had was to reduce the size, the height, of the part of the, of the new property that is closer to ours. And it has happened because the, the second story is now gone and so you have the existing plus a roof on the top. However, even that roof right now when we see the new designs and we really you know, go in there and look at them, it's gonna be tall. So, uh, and that corner, I don't know if we can go back in the slides. Would you mind, Mr. Duca, to, to use the slides? Sure, please. Uh, if you can go back to the slides. That one, okay, so, or that one. Yeah, uh, actually the previous one is even better, yeah. Conceptual? That Conceptual. one, yeah. So, so my property is where it says there, uh, that one. That's my property. Uh -huh. it, this is the old owner, right? That name over there. So you see that corner that is the closest to my property? That's really where the variance is sought for. So what I was hoping is I was hoping to the new construction to be a little bit further from mine, from my property. It's an opportunity right now, since we're doing it, it's an opportunity. I have offered a couple of quick suggestions to Mr. Duke, Duca uh, to maybe make it uh, you know, um, a, a little bit of a smaller garage and a little bit further from my property and the property that is right next to, to you know, the, the one that is like to the, to the bottom of this drawing, right, which is also adjacent. Uh, and that's really what I, I came here to discuss. In principle, definitely very, you know, have worked very nicely with Mr. Duca and, uh, you know, I want to support it, but I would really appreciate if it could be some consideration to bring it a little bit further out from us because we will be seeing it like very, it's gonna be overwhelming. And that's, you know, uh, and we're also concerned about the value of our property um, and uh, you know that that kind of thing. It's 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 high up. So if it's high up and closer to us, it's worse than if it's high up but a little further from us. That's thank you. you. Know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? Won't be your only opportunity. Okay. We're gonna. John does. Uh, what we, well, we're gonna just send this off to the planning board. This is gonna go to the planning board on the 27th of September, and back here on October 11th. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And just one more question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, in the event of the snowstorm, where are you planning to put the snow? When it's in front of you, you know. Um, I don't know that, um, aside from shoveling out the rear stair that goes down, I don't know that we're pretty much on the street level. And I don't know that we'll be, I mean, whatever snow we shovel off the patio, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying in the front of the house. It's like, you oh, know, in front of the house, uh, just like, house. Uh, it would be just like any other person who lives on the street. Uh, we would just shovel it and make a four foot walkway. We are set back off the street four feet, but we could pile it on our property. Um, 
that would be, you know, but it would be not unlike other folks that shovel their snow. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Um, the next case, 2022-15, has asked, we're going to be moving that to October 11th. Do we have to vote on that? Yes. Do yes. I have a motion to move this to October 11th, Marilyn? Yes. Do I have a second, Joe? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. October 11th it is. The next case in front of us is 2022-18, 68 Marginal Street, Pablo and Anna Castillo. This we, we, we do have the opportunity to vote on. Hello, sir. Uh, David Mindlin representing the Castillos. Um, Pablo and Anna. Oh, did you just come up with us? Anna has the clearest. Speak into my. Anna has the clearest explanations and answers to your questions. Um, if you recall, we were here a month ago. Um, the project, in short, is uh, 68 Marginal Street um, was burned, not burned down, but substantially destroyed by a fire last December. Um, <clears throat> the Castillo, it's a three-family house at present. Um, it's not inhabitable right now. What the Castillos would like to do is convert the three-family to a four-family when they rebuild. Uh, they need relief for open space, and they are one parking space short. Um, the footprint of the building, for all intents and purposes, would not be changed. There's one small overhang from the third floor that's open to the ground, and they would be filling that in. Otherwise, there would be no change whatsoever to the footprint. Um, the roof, uh, that's the, the original pitch of the roof. It's actually a pitched roof that's dormered out, and the new plans call for a flat roof no change in the height, and again, no change in the footprint, no change in the parking. Um, the Castillos live in what's now a duplex of, well, they lived in a duplex apartment which covered the second and third floors. It's way too much space for their present needs. So all they were looking to be doing in this case is splitting that large apartment into two reasonably sized apartments um, they intend to move back into the building and rent out three of the units and occupy one unit. Good. Again, this was, um, we, this is still a public hearing. It's still open to the public. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? Well, first of all, do we have, well, I'll do that. If you want to speak, go right ahead. <laughs> For the record. Speak into the microphone. I think yeah. I've done this once or twice already. Um, thank you, Roy Avezanez, 325 Commandant Way, City Council President, and I'm here to speak in favor of the petition and support the uh, conversion. I know that the Castillo family, um, longtime members in the community, have lived here in the, uh, the, the Chelsea for many years, um, owners of a, a business here in Broadway, um, really uh, stakeholders here, and um, I know that it was a tragedy what happened with, with them to their home. Um, to no fault of their own, just a live wire that was too close to their home and uh, caused the terrible loss. So I support that the expansion, and really I don't think it's a major change or increase. Um, it's a leveling of the roof for the description that was provided. And I, I think that the parking that they have off street, in addition to some of the off street they have in the neighborhood, will suffice. So I hope this board will look favorably towards this uh, project. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? Okay, so before I technically close the public portion, I'm gonna ask the board again if they have any questions that might generate other questions. Does the board have any questions? That being said, I'm going to close the public portion of the hearing. I have a question. The last time we met, there was a room that we weren't with the, the is this the downstairs room? Right. And you know, I'm, we just wanted to make sure. I understand that you want to use it as a mud room or something like that, but we just want to. I want to make sure it's not going to be a bedroom. No, absolutely so not. So, if anything, we, you know, I would probably want to recommend if we put any conditions on this that if we that this not be a bedroom. Correct. It will not be. Okay, but we just that you know we would like if we yes. agree with that. Now, 
This, we do have a variance requirement, Mr. Dominion, so you're going to have to walk us through those. Big surprise. The variance is sought because of soil conditions, shape, or topography of such land or structure, and especially affecting such land or structure, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. So the site is fully built out. Um, part, of the, part of it is the parking area, but there's nowhere to add to the building and increase the open space without compromising the parking. Um, and that would be the basis for and probably creating more those. inconsistencies. Um, two, a literal enforcement of, provis of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. So as I stated earlier, um, if the building is rebuilt as a three-family house, there would be a tremendous amount of wasted space, in effect, um, enough space to create a very nice new residential uh, unit for someone. Um, by allowing the fourth unit, it allows them to um, put more of an investment into providing a, a more up-to-date, modern building as it's rebuilt on the existing footprint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. This is the easy one. <laughs> yeah, this is in the Waterfront Upland District, which is intended to en encourage residential and business uses. Um, there would be virtually no additional burden on public services. Um, and again, fits well within the, the intention of the zoning district. And it provides additional housing. Yes. It does. Yes. A desir desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. Again, this, this one sort of flows from the, the third justification in that, again, it's the up waterfront upland district and it's encouraging residential uses, reasonable residential uses um, in a district that's intended to combine that with business use along the waterfront. John, so you've met all the requirements, thank you. John, does the planning department have any thoughts or recommendations? Uh, our recommended, uh, recommended conditions are standard conditions as applicable. Um, I had originally proposed eliminating a door to the basement computer room, however, um, a condition that it shall never be used as a, uh, as a bedroom is sufficient. Um, you know, we'll have a community improvement trust fund payment is going to be required. Uh, design review by my department and um, occupants of the units on the first and third floor will not be eligible to part participate in the city's resident sticker parking program. That's just, that's a state, that's a city regulation. But the owners, but they can. Cause, cause yes, because it's an existing unit. Okay. Wait, you, you know? Yeah, so the, on your proposing plan on the first floor, there's, there's a little room by the stairs. That's the one we're talking about. No, 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 it's, oh. on, it's, it's on, the, on the first. There's a little piece here. doesn't show what it is. No. On the first floor plan. That the... That one to the far left? First. Is this on the proposed? Yeah, on the proposed. Second floor, existing third floor, existing basement. Which floor, Hugo? Hmm? What was that? Which floor? First floor. First floor. This right here? Yeah. Yep. That is the wall that it's going from the you get to the microphone, I'm sorry. That is the wall yeah. that it's going to go all the way down from so that's the a wall. It's a wall in that's there. A wall. Okay, it's not a room then, it's a wall. No, it's not that room. It's it's a wall that's going to go down. The existing... This... Right here. You can't you get to talk to the, the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, just, they're just going to move the wall so it goes right below the balcony. There will be no room. Okay, so right now, the wall is in the first floor. It's right here. 
but the, on the balcony, on the second, third floor, it's coming out, so the wall is gonna come in all the way down here. So there will be no room whatsoever. So that's not a room, it's what, that space is not a room, that's what you're no. saying. No. But that's not what it's showing, because it's showing a window there. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, it shows a window. That's the entrance to the, can we just stand up? Go ahead. So, and then you can go back. Introduce yourself formally for the record, I'm sorry. Yeah, then you, you can go back to the house, the, the no, building. No, 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 no. State your name. Oh, excuse me. Uh, my name is Pablo Castillo. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. <coughs> no, let me go to the existing uh, property we have. Is that the window? No. no, no let's no, go no. back That's to the, 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 the original house, the, the way the house was. You want the you want the picture? Yes. Oh, the picture. Yes. For the photo. Yeah. For if you uh, uh, can I see yeah, that? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you're looking here, you see there is a balcony here. The window that right behind this wall coming up here, and then go inside like this. But for me, <coughs> I mean the the way that we did the plane now, we had to cross down the wall in here, right? Cross it up and make the wall even all the way down to here. But for that, we had to put some windows because. We need some light inside of the property, inside of the house. So if we just block it up in here to make it even, right? And, uh, and we don't put some windows outside. Those windows have to go back to the outside. But there will be no room from there. That would be. But, it, but I, don't, I think it's, is that going to be an empty space? Is it going to be? It's an empty it's space to go just, into but, the other room where it's going to be the computer oh, and the sure. machines and everything oh, that's else. Another room. That's what it's going to be. So but it's, it's going to be open space but not used as a room. It's just going to be open. Like a corridor. Mm. Yes. Just like a corridor or a hall or something. Yes. So they, I don't know, John, it shows a big window on this. But he's saying so he said it's letting light in. That's what it's, it's for the corridor that enters into the other room. That's what because she says it's a wall, so what do you need light to a wall? So it's a wall with a window? It's, but I, 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 guess, I guess the question is, what's, is there something solid behind it is what they're saying. Is there, it, it's unclear, I, I think what you're saying. It's like, why do you need a window if there's yeah. nothing there? If there's no, if this just goes to a wall? Well, don't the, the, wall the second wall is not the, going to be there. This because goes through there. I do don't know. On your plan, it shows a window that this window here, this is the proposed plans that you're giving us. And this shows a window, and you're telling me there's a wall there, this window here. Okay. This is the big plane on the picture. And it shows no access to that room. Right, so what, I guess that's what they're saying, why do you need a, there's no, is it a room or is it not a room? That's what, it's unclear. But it's not just a wall. A16, you guys know the number? A16? Yeah. But, but there's no access to it. It's like, hmm? it's like uh -huh. the wall is straight across, there's no door. So John, could you, can you point it out what he's talking about on the, so it's up. So we're talking about this, we're talking about this room right here. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a window right here and there's a wall with no access to that, to that room. So why is there a window? Why do you, it's just an empty space. It's but that's a closed off empty space with a window. The inside wall is not going to be there because that's the existing wall right now. But since the balcony is hanging over, so the outside, that's gonna be the outside wall. There is no gonna be a room. It's just gonna be opened completely. But, but if, it's, if it's not gonna be ac accessible, why do you need that room there? She's, but she said it is going to be, it's going to be the extension of the room. So there's that second wall is not going to be there is what she's saying. No, they're going to be okay. just there now. But I think you guys are not on the same page. It looks like it provides lighting to the stairwell. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were trying to so say on it? From the, second, yes. from the second floor up to the third floor, we have to eliminate the, the balcony. Go talking to the microphone, sir, please. Talking to the microphone, sir. 
Acá dice, to go from the second floor, because right now we got second and third level from the inside of the house. So but to go from the second floor up to the third floor, we had to eliminate the balcony they had and to make the stair right there okay. by the balcony. So that would be. So a private entrance to the third floor that you currently don't have a private entrance to the third right. floor. Is that what you're saying? Because that's your, your residence. You're saying the third floor, you currently reside on the second and third floor, correct? Correct. So you don't have an external entrance to the third floor. So this is to create an external entrance to the third that floor, and you are putting light there so that to go up to the step to the, I'm, I'm just trying to see if I, yes. you go up to the correct. third floor, you can do, the, I'm, is that what you're saying? So this light, this will provide light so that the, the internal stairs to the third floor has some light. That's right. Is that what you're saying? Completely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Correct. So that, so this, all right. So that's not really a wall. That's an ex, that's an entrance to the, that's that inner thing is not a wall. It's an entrance to the staircase. There's no wall at the second wall. The internal thing is not a wall. Does that make sense to you? I don't know. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> well, the way I described it, it makes sense to me because that's how I described it. But I don't know if that's the truth. But yeah, I mean, if that's it what is. it is. So it sounds, I mean, you don't, have the, you don't have a separate staircase there now. You have to create a separate staircase. Correct. You are creating a window so that it's not this claustrophobic space as you're walking up to the third floor. You are so completely you correct. Can you eliminate the wall that doesn't exist from that plan? I think it's that the plan is misleading. The plan yeah. looks like there's yeah. a wall and a yeah. wall with mm -hmm. nothing there. If you take it out, can you guys take it out and have the, the plan well, be done? Can that be clarified as part of no, the design I mean, as long as they know that, I mean, then it doesn't make sense for them to have to try that. build it. Because that inner wall is not there. It's, it's just well, it wouldn't make sense it it, when they build it, it. It wouldn't make sense to have it there. Yeah. So it's just the foyer area to the staircase. That's what I'm understanding. And, that's and it, like, looks, it looks like it's a support for the stairwell hmm. on the side. It, that, and it might well be. That's a support. But it's, the bottom line is it's not a room. Not so maybe all. what we need to just clarify in our, in our special permit is that whatever that is, it's not a room. No, it's not. Okay? Are we okay with that? Yes. That will sort of clarify that it's not a little hidden space. We good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, given that, do we have a motion to approve this variance of special Actually, permit? Can we just go back to the standard oh. conditions? Oh. I'm sorry. Standard conditions, Marilyn has a I question. I just want to make sure that the Castillos are aware of the um, Community Improvement Trust Fund I permit. think you just, didn't you just say it? Mm -hmm. I think you said it. Yeah, but they're okay with that. You know you got to pay the Community Improvement Trust Fund. John, do, okay. do they? Part of those conditions trust also? Fund. Right here. Are they aware of that? So that's based, what is, what is that? It's based on a formula. Are they it's required to pay that? Well, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. for, it's, it's based on the type of relief they receive, and it's uh, three percent. It's no more than 3% of the total cost of the project. Okay. And it's prorated. Yeah, it's a standard fee. It's prorated based on the amount of relief that you get. Okay. Thank you. So you, but, okay, so that's required. Okay. 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 All right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, do we have a motion? No, I just have oh. one question for clarification on the parking permit program. Um, John, you had mentioned that two units would not be eligible to participate. To any the, new units are not eligible to participate. But if there were three units, wouldn't only the new unit not be eligible? So three would be eligible and one would not be? Correct. Okay. I, I, just because I think you said that. I did say it that because I read it as if you were creating two new units. I'll reread it if it's just the one unit. So you're living on the first and second floor now. Second and third. Second and third. You will be creating one new unit, either the second or the third. That unit will not, the, the tenants of that unit will not be able to get stickers for parking on the street. It's whatever the new unit is. It's whatever the new unit is. Okay. Now do we have a vote? A motion? You go. Yeah, make a <coughs> I make a motion to approve um, case 2022-18 for special permits and variances to seek an approval for, um, for making a, a home in a four building and the four apartments. With, with the special conditions as we've articulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Jones? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. The next case we'll be hearing is 2022-1965 Shirtless Street, Mario Claros for our public. We'll also be, be able to vote on this one today. I don't know why my screen's I know, right I don't know what's the, the, I was thinking it was my eyes for a minute. Thank goodness it's not. Mm -hmm. it, it did clear for a minute, but I, my laptop may be dying. Oh dear, well that's not good. So please, this has gone to the planning board. This was another one of those cases that was not able to Correct. be ultimately addressed. So please reacquaint us again with your proposal. Introduce yourself. Reacquaint us with your proposal again. I'm Albin Claros. This is my father, Mario Claros. He's the owner of uh, 65 Charlotte. Um, so the, um, uh, we're seeking for a special permit. Um, my father redid the first floor, and by doing that, he um, lost one of the bedrooms in the first floor. So he's seeking for a special permit to um, build two bedrooms in the basement. Uh, those two bedrooms won't be um, rented out or won't be making any profits. Uh, the reason my father is trying to do that, he's trying to make better use of the space that he has in the basement since uh, he lost uh, one of the bedrooms in the first floor. And um, so uh, one of the issues was that um, the parking space, there was uh, only two parking spaces. So he is willing to work on that. And um, if there is a need for uh, to build a third parking space in there, he's, he's willing to get rid of a deck that he has in the back. And uh, that's pretty much it. He's seeking for a uh, special permit on uh, those uh, two bedrooms on the basement. Questions before I open it up to the public? When you say that you lost the bedroom, what does that mean? The first floor was originally a four bedroom okay. apartment. Okay. And um, so he uh, built a dining room in there. Okay. So that's the reason uh, he ended up uh, losing one of the bedrooms on the first floor. And you, you know, again, uh, obviously, I, at our last hearing, our concern was that, you know, making sure that this is not an Airbnb, it's not a rental. Correct. Know. That's the reason that we are also okay. remarking that it won't be ah, used John for that. Fixed. Okay, I'm going to, uh, do I have any questions before we open this to the public? Okay, this will be your last opportunity. You have to speak on this. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? There being none closing the public participation portion of this hearing. Um, this is not a variance, so we don't have to go through those special things. You know, my only concern on this one was, um, Juan John, what about the parkings? What, what's the, does the planning department have any thoughts or comments? Uh, yes, I'm just gonna pull Yeah, when you do your thing. I know at least we're not red anymore, thank goodness. Ah, uh, so much better. That's okay. It's no, okay. You got to do what you really got to do. Take, it's really going to take a while. It's probably, that, it's probably going to take about ten to fifteen minutes. <laughs> okay, so, so let's. The, uh, the conditions that we have are standard applicable conditions uh, that the um, bedrooms in the basement shall only be part of the first floor and not rented out separately. That's so correct. So they're meant to be living area for the first floor only. Correct. Right. It is. That is the plan. Uh, it will be an extension of the first uh, right. floor. And, and there were issues about parking, so they would, would they need an additional parking space based on this request? Uh, they would, but they can only provide two, so they're looking for relief. They were looking for relief for that, okay. Um, do we have any thoughts, people? No? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to uh, approve it with the standard conditions. No, and, 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 and to make sure that no uh, Airbnb that it's not rental. an Airbnb, that it's or not rent. a rental, that it's for the owner occupied, for the owner okay. owner's that's use. Okay. Yes. Do we have a second? Yes. You go. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Gotta be Joe. Okay. Joe. All in favor? Aye. Good luck. Thank you very much. No renting. The next one in front of us is 2022-2175 Orange Street, Jean and Ramona Bourguignon 
for special permit seeking approval for a driveway opening permit. Remind us again, when to introduce yourself for, and go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Janara Organyan. I am um, here on behalf of my parents. They can be here uh, because of the rescheduling of the last meeting. Did you, so you're authorized to speak on their behalf? Yes. Do we need anything from them that says that, John, or is that? At the last meeting, we talked about um, that the fact that their plan did not show how much area they want to pave and that they were, pro they were to provide us with a plan showing the paved area. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I don't have that um, visual, but I know that they are planning to pave just a section for four spots. I know, um, but we really need a plan showing that. Okay, so you would need us to come back and show that document or? Well, we, we could require that you submit that as part of your can we do that? Or yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, we still have to talk it through. So that's, as you recall, this was sort of one of those entrances that. Was, yes. Do we have any questions? Is there anybody here who wishes to speak on this? It's your last opportunity to do so. There being none, I am closing the public particip participation portion of this hearing. Um, John, other than that requirement that they submit a plan that shows the paving. Uh, just in it. Just the as standard applicable. as applicable. And, 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 yeah. Should Sorry. we just have it the whole thing six feet? We don't well, want like, the whole thing. Well, you don't want the whole thing six feet. Yeah, I mean, I think we just want, but they should show, because it's, you don't want the whole yard. Yeah. Um, is there anybody who, or do we want to make a motion on this? Do we have a, Joe, you want to make a motion? <coughs> With regards to case 2022-20, 175 Orange Street for special permit approval for a driveway open permit. Uh, we uh, approve based on the conditions. Recommend a special permit with the requirement that they applicable special standard conditions and the requirement that they submit a, a paving plan. Second. Second, Joan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So they gotta submit the paving plan if they're not gonna get their permit. Okay. okay. Thank you. And do we submit that today? Hmm? We'd submit that today. You have. Will you submit that when to John officially to John or Hector officially so it becomes part of the record? Okay. And you, until you do that, they they won't finalize the permit. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next case, 2022-21, 655 Washington Ave, Silk Red Harvest LLC, for a special permit seeking approval to establish a parking area and curb cut which does not meet the city of Chelsea zoning ordinance, which states that parking of a vehicle is not permitted within the required front yard setback of a property not within five feet of a side lot line. This also includes for city of Chelsea zoning ordinance, no entrance or exit from any off street parking area with four or more parking spaces shall be located within 50 feet of an intersection or of any two street lines. This is one of those, we know this is a somewhat interesting and unique um, applicate well probably not unique given Chelsea but pretty different so it's a small portion of a larger project please reintroduce us to that introduce yourself and introduce the project thank you good evening my name is Paul Tellier I'm with D'Ambrosio LLP of Revere Mass and I have my clients here with me this evening um, this is as you have suggested a larger project the majority of which is in Revere it's a 16 unit apartment building um, that is on the border at Washington Street of both Revere and Chelsea. The portion that is in Chelsea is approximately 700 square feet, which consists of uh, parking sp one parking space and half of another parking space. A small portion of the driveway to the complex, a uh, prospect I believe it is, and also a curb cut and of course around the parking spaces, some low level um, landscaping. Um, what we're doing is we're seeking uh, a special permit to allow us to have that parking space and a half, the curb cut and the small portion of the driveway. Um, we, ha did, we were fortunate to receive all of our zoning relief from the city of Revere on August 24th. Um, so this is the only thing left 
that's holding up the project so that we can move forward with the 16 unit apartment building. And as we can see right here on the plan, um, it is that- Try to talk into the microphone, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. It is that small portion that John is going over right there. It's that parking space and a half, the entrance right there, um, where the arrow is right, um, is it, uh, located with the curb cut. And as I recall, it's not an overly congested street. Correct. John, does the planning department have any comments on this? Um, the purpose for the uh, two requirements, one is that um, no parking be within five feet, in the front yard or within five feet of the, of the side lot line is uh, so that one, that the cars are not parking on the sidewalk, but also so that uh, vehicles coming out of the side street can have clear distance on Washington Avenue to see other vehicles coming. And this is set far, this is, this is set back far enough that it's not blocking that sight distance on Washington Ave. Uh, I am recommending the installation of a fence uh, in the front and on the side of the parking just so the cars don't over, uh, drive over on the sidewalk and tend to park on the sidewalk. And uh, I'm also recommending on the curb cut, similar to what we told the Washington Ave people, was that the curb cut the design is that the uh, sidewalk is flush at the back of the sidewalk, uh, so pedestrians don't have to step down or slope down to level the street. Okay. Yeah. No problem. And then the other condition I'm recommending is a stop sign be placed on prospect at Washington. There's no stop sign out there. At least when I went out there and took pictures a couple months ago, there, were no st there was no stop sign here. No problem. Okay. That's okay. Um, if this, there's only six, I don't know why I'm losing it. There's only six um, lots on Prospect Street. If there were more, I'd be more concerned about the driveway being closer than 50 feet or, or the, uh, side, the parking right on the street, but with just six, unit, six units, it's not really that okay. big a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna open this to the public, but does the board have any comments before I do that? Looks like no bus stop or anything like that in the way, right? No bus stop or no bus interference or anything like that? It's not, it's not interfering with anything. Okay, this is, again, this is still a public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? There being none, I'm closing the public participation portion of the hearing. Do I have a motion on this one? Um, Joan? I'll make a motion, yes. I make a motion to approve 2022-21, 655 Washington Avenue for special permit seeking approval to establish, establish a parking area and curb cut with special conditions. With the tick, as John articulated. As John articulated. A second. All in favor? Aye. Now you can, you see, it's always has been, it's only been two weeks since you had the approval. Exactly, so thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. The next one in front of us is 2022-22, 295 Eastern Ave. Um, 295 Eastern Ave, LLC. We will not be deciding on this today because it's the first time we'll be hearing it. We'll be taking public testimony. It will be going to the planning board on 927 and it will be back here before the zoning board on 1011. So please present your, pro introduce yourselves in front of the microphone and present your project to us, please. Uh, thank you, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Jay Eigerman, attorney with Ruben, Junius and Rose with an office at 112 Water Street in Boston. Uh, with me is Jackie Martin from the ownership uh, also, Katie Cruz, our civil engineer, Jim Thornhill, the architect, uh, Dan Adams, the urban designer, and Ken Cram on transportation. Uh, I'll take you through the first few slides and then the experts will come on. Um, next slide, please. There's if anybody's a interested, overall... they can come and stand over here if they want to see, if they can't see. Okay, yeah. so. Go ahead, so sir. Here, here's a, a rendering of the uh, facility. This is a light manufacturing or warehouse storage facility. Uh, next slide, please. This gets you oriented on Chelsea Creek. Uh, that's 295 Eastern Avenue shown. It's about 19 acres. It's partially bounded by the MBTA commuter rail, which you'll see at the very extreme bottom of the photograph. Um, there's also uh, an abutter that we share an easement with and I'll address that at 305 um, Eastern Avenue. The two existing buildings were built in 1960. 
uh, and there's one from 1996 for automotive use. Historically, this was a petroleum storage area, but all the tanks were removed some time ago. There's been an activities use limitation recorded against this property to deal with any petroleum spills since 1991. Next slide, please. This shows a little bit more detail, so you can see that uh, the buildings are right now to the westerly edge, and the area where the tanks were is mostly grass, and there's an old pier that uh, sticks out somewhat into the creek. Next slide, please. Whoop, no, I think we got to uh, access, maybe go back. Yeah, the zoning. Uh, zoning, uh, this is in the port district, so for the special permit there have to be findings specific to the port district as well. Uh, to do these uses require a special permit, no variances, um, and in fact any non-residential at this size, this is about 114,000 square feet, would require a special unit, uh, special uh, permit. Uh, the project is also in a couple of overlay districts, the airport related and the wireless communications, but those are not relevant to what we're proposing. There's state jurisdiction too, I don't want to gloss over that. We've been through a full MEPA review, Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. The certificate was issued uh, after an EIR, Environmental Impact Report, in August. We would have to get at least three state permits that people should be aware of. There has to be a Chapter 91 license, maybe we can go to the next slide, because this is private filled tidelands. There will be uh, 100 feet buffer for water dependent uses from the shoreline where no uh, industrial uses will occur, just public access. There'll also uh, be a water quality certification to make sure we're not damaging the creek. Uh, it's possible that we need a permit from U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to do some work uh, with the outflow. Next slide, please. Uh, this is fine, let's stay on this one. I'll turn it over to the landscape architect in a minute. Um, the correspondence you got from the abutter uh, arose because we weren't aware that uh, our building was actually proposed, although on our land, on an easement that they had a right to. So in August, we submitted a revision uh, to move the building down 23 and a half feet uh, so that there's no proposed work within the easement area uh, that benefits the neighbor at 305 Eastern. They've asked us to look at uh, some drainage issues um, obviously, we've designed our drainage and our engineer is here tonight so that nothing goes on their property. Everything has to be redone and uh, uh, go down uh, to the creek in those outfalls. But they've engaged an engineer and they need their own engineer to evaluate that. So by the time we get back to you, uh, they will have done that work. Again, by law and good practice, we would not drain on their property. Um, the proposal, as you see, shows one building, as I said, about 114,000 square feet. Um, the trade-off here, as noted in the Secretary of the Environment's uh, uh, certificate, is right now this is a use, uh, use area, wholly industrial, that's not open to the public, even though it's on Chelsea Creek. So what we've done is we've designed, and you'll hear from the landscape architect, uh, public access that goes around the entire uh, perimeter of the site. So not just on the shoreline, but we have a pathway so people can get into the site uh, from Eastern Avenue two different ways. Um, and uh, so the, the uses will be compatible. Um, to emphasize, this is not a freight forwarding facility. Those are much larger. Uh, I know 114,000 square feet sounds large, but those big Amazon freight forwarding operations are hundreds and hundreds of thousands. This is also a speculative development. We don't have a tenant in mind. Uh, what we have is three uh, possible tenants, so each has an office space that's built into this, and they're doing, uh, it's warehouse space that actually gets priced out by the big boys like Amazon that we're trying to capture. The fiscal benefits of the project were submitted in writing, but to summarize for you and for the public, uh, we calculate the net annual increase in taxes will be about $105,000. Um, that's every year. Uh, there's a linkage fee. The city council, as you know, is considering a home rule petition, and we will be paying that. Uh, that comes out to about $1.1 million. And then also, there is a thought that someday there could be development uh, to the east of us, and a boardwalk could be continued. That can't happen now, and that will have to be a separate project for another day, but we've earmarked half a million dollars for that work uh, so that it's available to the city. With that, I, I do want to turn it over to Dan. 
Dan Adams uh, is worked very hard on this landscaping, and he'll be able to answer questions as well. Uh, hi, my name is Dan Adams. I'm a you can pick it up. You can pick it up. <laughs> the last person was smaller than you. Can uh, take it off if you want. Well, this is fine. Thank okay. you. Uh, Please introduce yourself formally. Uh, for yeah. So my name is Dan Adams. I'm an architect and urban designer. Uh, if you could advance the slides. Uh, and one more, please. I'll be speaking about the sort of public access elements of the site. Um, Sorry, it, this is not working very well. You're having a very antsy, antsy is this computer. this what you want? Yeah, yeah, we can start here. This is fine. Essentially, as was described, in the heart of the site is the uh, building and its sort of supporting apron. Immediately around the site is an extensive landscape that we've been designing for public access along what we call the turning basin of Chelsea Creek, which is essentially the northernmost extent of Chelsea Creek before it becomes uh, Mill Creek. Uh, obviously, there's been a long sort of standing effort and desire in the city to increase public access on the creek. Uh, this in total creates about a half mile long circuit of public access networks around the site, half of which are along the waterfront. Uh, next slide, please. Or actually, if you, sorry, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sorry, this is great. The shoreline itself is very extensive uh, with sort of a tidal constructed riprap. Immediately to the right on the image is what would be called the turning basin of Chelsea Creek. And there's all sorts of sort of rich habitat, uh, flora and fauna on the site, horseshoe crabs, oysters, et cetera. What you can start to see on land is what we call a pioneer secession landscape, essentially following the removal of the oil tanks on the site and the leveling of the dikes. A series of aspen and cottonwood groves have been pioneering on the site, which are great sort of native trees. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the character of those groves, which are obviously very habitat rich. Uh, many people have looked at this site in years and um, advocated for public access to uh, this site, the waterway, and preservation of some of this natural secession. I think. Uh, something that's been cited by many community members is the proximity to the elementary school and the sort of educational opportunities of being able to get children out on the waterfront for classes, et cetera. And we've had outreach with the principals of the school. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we've had a number of community events on this site, including uh, community walks, and next slide, <coughs> uh, collected feedback. Uh, and much of that feedback kind of reiterated what we've in fact heard for years, which is a desire for access and preservation of nature and connection to the elementary school. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> Just some of the kind of character and preserve, you know, uh, the types of amenities that we anticipate on the site. Uh, a lot of the feedback was a desire for sort of organic construction, use of wood, furniture for classes, and again, uh, a major element is the uh, creation of rain gardens as an educational element to show sort of the uh, water flows and how we can better manage water off of infrastructure and industrial sites going into Chelsea Creek. Uh, next slide, please. Just so one as second, Gen gentlemen, gentlemen, could you, if you, would you take it outside? Okay, thank you. So as was described before, this is the existing condition of the site. You can see the sort of meandering, extensive character of the waterfront and the vast mud flats that exist in this uh, area, which are, again, rich in habitat. Next slide, please. Uh, we've been working with uh, an ecologist uh, from offshoots, Kate Kennan, to identify the kind of pioneering species on the site and figure out strategies of preserving those. Uh, fortunately, most of the pioneer species really exist along the coastal edge which is the area we're proposing for public access and landscape preservation. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a simple diagram to just sort of our, you know, make uh, more clear the kind of major path network. The dashed lines heading up to the east was the described commitment for $500,000 towards the future boardwalk connecting up to the old Forbes site uh, when that becomes available on the sort of northeast uh, area. The two P's are the two kind of public parking areas that are uh, proposed. Um, and then the rest is uh, the lighting that would be uh, around the uh, uh, building itself. And the yellow are actually electrical receptacles that we've sort of found from other parks in Chelsea are really helpful for supporting future events and installations. 
Uh, one of the key pieces of feedback that we got, particularly from Green Roots, who we've had extensive discussions and meeting with, uh, was really how do you create kind of a loop, um, both for people to like recreate for like jogging or walking, but also for a feeling of safety so that there's not just sort of like a single way in, single way out, but ways to meander through the site so you can kind of choose your path. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the overall site plan. What's highlighted in the kind of more turquoise blue color is the stormwater management. So that's really the kind of sponge filter of all the water coming off of both the building and the apron so that all of the water coming off the site would be filtered through bioremediation before discharging into Chelsea Creek. Uh, it also kind of helps create a natural buffer between the public landscape and the more infrastructural activities. Uh, and also, as I mentioned before, sort of a real educational opportunity with signage to explain kind of the hydrology on the site. Uh, highlighted in pink are the two public parking areas, and then uh, you can sort of make out the path network moving along the entire waterfront. We're proposing that as a generous 10-foot wide path to support uh, sort of multiple people passing each other on the path. Uh, next slide, please. These are just a few before and after uh, renderings. This is the sort of current presence on Eastern Avenue. You can see the sort of large trees that we'd be looking to preserve and uh, uh, essentially hundreds of new trees that we're proposing planting to. Uh, next slide. This is the uh, waterfront area where we have these sort of clearings within the trees that we're proposing as the outdoor classrooms. Next slide. Uh, where, where there are some trees being removed on the site, we would salvage that wood to create the sort of what we're calling learning circles. The <coughs> we're planning to, planning to do a lot of sort of small scale plantings to really encourage, sort of preserve the secessional quality. So those little blue tubes sticking out of the ground are just rabbit protections to protect the, the small trees from being eaten. Next uh, slide. Uh, this would be a condition of the sort of shoreline where it comes in closer proximity to the industrial operations. Next slide. Um, and so you can see how the green infrastructure is used as a buffer between the path and the uh, uh, industrial operations. Next slide. This is the jetty, which was the former sort of fuel transfer jetty at the terminal. Um, a really great opportunity to kind of walk out into the turning basin and get nearly 360 degree views of Chelsea Creek. Next slide. Uh, we really like the idea of creating sort of a small gathering space with sort of like a picnic table there. Uh, next slide. Uh, we are looking at sort of similar to Port Park a little bit, salvaging some of the elements on this site. Uh, there's this interesting old sort of overhead walkway with sort of supported by these columns and beam system. Next slide. We're proposing turning that into a vine trellis. So this would now be the back side of the warehouse, which is Eastern Ave Extension sort of the backside of the loop that people can take circumnavigating the site. Uh, next slide, please. All right, and I'll hand it off to discuss the building itself. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Jim Thornhill. I'm the principal in charge from Applied Form and Space Architects for the Project Architects. I wanna give you just a very brief overview of the building itself, uh, which is a one-story building. As it, has, as it has been said, it's about 14,000 square feet uh, it's a three tenant space uh, at this time. Each tenant is about 38,000 square feet. Actually, if you could go to the next slide, please. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, uh, three tenant spaces at 38,000 square feet. Uh, the clear interior height is 36 feet clear. If, next slide, please. I think that's the only, the second and only slide for me. Um, the average roof height is about 43 feet above the slab level, and this is a pre-engineered metal building. So for GFI partners, this typically includes a 10-foot CMU base uh, at the exterior wall for durability. The remainder of the exterior walls are three-inch insulated metal panels for thermal efficiency. Uh, the roofing has two layers of bad insulation over the roof joists, and the roofing is a standing seam metal roof. And our general column grid is a 56 by 57-foot grid, which is typical for uh, warehouse facilities. Um, there's just a few design concepts I want to relate because honestly, the building becomes kind of a backdrop to Dan and um, uh, his firm's beautiful work. Uh, it's a very simple building. It's a single pitched roof. Um, two, uh, a couple elements that we were able to enhance by shifting the building south. Previously, uh, this is an unlimited area building by the uh, International Building Code, the State Building Code. 
and the, the wall facing uh, Eastern Avenue extension would have had to have been a three hour fire resistant wall, which, in, which meant any opening in that wall would also have to be a three hour rating. By shifting the building south, we alleviated of that three hour wall and that allowed us to install glazing. Um, so where we have offices planned, now we have windows and that's gonna help reinforce um, a connection between the interior occupied office spaces and the exterior uh, public access spaces. We were also able to add 12 clear story windows, those that you can see on the top elevation to further kind of enhance that elevation as well as adding um, entry canopies over those uh, two main uh, entry areas. So all these elements uh, help to uh, kind of animate that side of the building and to help encourage, um, uh, I think, folks to kind of take that path as they walk through there. Um, one thing that's shown up in the renderings, but they don't show in this elevation, is that there's a building mural proposed for at least the uh, Eastern Avenue side of the wall. Um, as you go through and see some of the other, uh, some of the renderings, you'll notice that, and it's, uh, I just want to point out that what we're presenting in these renderings is a possibility of what these murals might look like. Ultimately, I think once the artist is selected um, through a design process, the ultimate mural will be, uh, will be selected and presented. Um, with that, I can turn it over to Ken for transportation. Good evening. My name is Ken Cram. I am with Bayside Engineering out of Woburn, Massachusetts. And we've been working on the uh, traffic impacts of the project. Uh, we can go to the first slide, please, for traffic. Um, uh, we, we've been working on this project for a couple of years now, and um, we did the project in, a, in accordance with the uh, Massachusetts uh, Department of Transportation and the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs guidelines for preparation of traffic impact assessments. Um, originally, we had a smaller study area of about four intersections, but at our meeting last spring, um, through discussions with members of the city, uh, the study area was expanded and we uh, included uh, all the way from uh, the ramps with Route 16 to Broadway, down Eastern Avenue, all the way to uh, Marginal Street to William Street and Pearl Street, eight total intersections. And we, as I said, we did the entire study uh, based on guidelines. We looked at existing conditions, future no build conditions without the project. Uh, I had several conversations with Mr. DePriest to get background projects, to make sure we had enough background projects included uh, for our projections. And then we projected our traffic. Next slide, please. Uh, we used the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual. The most current edition is the 11th edition. Um, and as shown here on the table, we're projecting 480 daily trips. Cut that in half for the number of total vehicles coming to and from the site, or about 240 with 81 trips from the morning peak hour, most of them coming in, uh, most likely being the employees. And then in the evening peak hour, about 44 trips are expected. Um, as part of our uh, findings on the next slide, uh, we recommended mitigation measures and access for the site access, uh, driveway being under stop site control. Um, there are good sight lines for our driveway. Uh, this is a warehouse, so there is expected to be some large trucks, um, and they will be directed to be using the uh, city's uh, traffic routes for trucking. Um, we are looking at, there are several uh, intersections that uh, could operate a little bit better with some signal timing enhancements, and we're looking forward to working with the city engineering department to enhance those. And we'll also have a, what we call a transportation demand management program um, in an effort to uh, get uh, employees to carpool, for instance. Uh, we'll have a transportation coordinator to help facilitate that, but there are a number of other items that all were identified in the traffic study um, that uh, typically of, of that go into transportation demand management programs. Um, and so that's a real brief summary of the traffic study, and I'll be here for answering any questions. Do you have traffic routes? Excuse me? Do you have, where are the traffic routes? Do you have any? Oh, we don't have a graphic for that, no. Okay. But it's, it's basically um, nothing, uh, all our traffic, all our truck traffic 
will not be going to the north to avoid the school that's, uh, well, northeast of us uh, to avoid the school. Uh, we're going to have all our trucking go uh, towards Boston and the bridge um, as they are currently directed now. John? Uh, your traffic impact uh, study uh, stated that your trucks will be coming to the site from the um, Beacon Street exit. Um, that is closed to truck traffic. That's okay. I can't do that. <laughs> we'll have to fix that. Well, okay. For those of us who live near there, we appreciate that. Um, okay, the other, how, so do, uh, will we eventually, uh, how do they get in and out of the site is I guess I would, I think at some point I'd just like to see a, an actual visual on how they come in, how they get into the site, the management on the site. I mean, it, because it sounds like you're going to have three different manufacturers which could potentially have a great, a, an extensive number of trucks coming in and out. So uh, I think that that's pretty critical. So if you want to um, put that. Don't, up. don't, don't talk, just use oh. the microphone. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, if you want to go back to What's your to name? The, my name is Jackie Martin. I'm with GFI Partners. Okay, I'm the owner you. and developer. Um, if you'd like to go back to that slide with the site plan, Ken can show you um, exactly where trucks will be coming into the site itself. But if you're talking about kind of an overarching arching map, um, we can work on that as well. Yeah, you can just that to that one. Um, do you want me to go further? Um, yeah, a little bit further, if you don't mind, just to the, the general site plan. There we go. Take the microphone with you. There you go. Yeah, here's Eastern Avenue right here, and our entrance is right here. And it's a very wide entrance for trucks to be able, most like, as I said, they'll be coming from the, uh, the west to turn right in, and all the truck traffic will be directed to turn left out. Is it wide enough to have both trucks coming in and out at the same time? That entrance, is it wide enough? If it two, one wants to go in and one's going out, is that wide enough to have both of them? Uh, we'll have to look at that. I thought we had looked at that, um, but I, I don't have a graphic for that, but we can provide that for the next hearing. Yeah, that'll be, I mean, I, I think, and I would like to see how traffic is going to flow on the site, and, and I assume that you'll have a management plan for, you know, if you have three different companies to when their trucks are going to come in, you would coordinate with the tenants or who, owners, whomever, because I just assume you don't want them all coming in at the same time. Because I, I, I found it difficult when we went over to the site, we went out a couple of weeks ago there to the site. Uh, all of a sudden there, it, it was a little congested. So, uh, and I realize you're gonna be taking down the buildings and all, but if you had your 285 or whatever posted, uh, it'd be a little easier to visually realize they, you're coming or maybe some of your colorful pictures might be visible from the highway then it would be, I think, very helpful. Thank you. Do, do you know if this will be a 24 hours um, building occupation? Or no? Sure, um, uh, we don't know for sure right now. Um, the tenant, n none of the tenants, um, we're not aware of who those tenants will be at this time. Um, so but what about the, the standard in business, in the standard in the industry, would they, is it a 24 seven operation? Uh, standard, yes, it, they would. How many parking spots under the whole, the whole site? 130. 130? Uh, 133 parking uh, 33. spaces. Okay. Any and other questions before we open to the public? Um, do you have, is this the end of your presentation? It is, it is, and it's, you can scroll to the end if, if you don't mind, John. Um, and I, I'll, with that, I'll end it by saying thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board for allowing us to present this evening. And all of our experts are here to answer any questions that you have. Okay, well, good, because we're gonna ask them. Um, okay. So for um, the board, I'm gonna open this to the public. Does the board have any other comments? So again, this is not gonna be the only opportunity. Go ahead, Marilyn. Yeah. The, go by the 133 board. spaces that you guys have, does that include the visitor spaces for the parks? For the it does. It does, okay. And of those 133 parking spaces, 38 of them will be um, EV parking spaces. Okay. 
Okay, so again, this is, this is not the only opportunity you're gonna have to speak to this. They're gonna, be, they're gonna come back to us in October. But if there's anybody who wishes to speak on this, please come up to the microphone, tell us your name and your address, and tell us what you wanna say. And if you don't wanna come up, you don't have to. My name is uh, Natalie Salomon. I represent uh, Glyptol, uh, the owner of 305 Eastern Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, and with me is the president of Glyptol, uh, Ben Hogue. Um, so we are here today to raise some of our concerns. Uh, one of them is with respect to uh, the new drainage system. And I will speak to it and just give you a brief uh, summary of our concern, and then Mr. Hogg uh, can then elaborate on it. Thank you. Um, with respect to the drainage system, so uh, the proposal is that there will be a brand new one. Uh, by way of a background, uh, 305 Eastern Ave is the abutter to 295 Eastern Ave, and for many, many years, uh, it's my understanding that it's been like 70 years, uh, 305 Eastern Ave uh, has tied into a line that drains directly into the uh, Chelsea Creek, and that line runs through 295 Eastern Ave. So obviously there will be a problem <laughs> uh, if that drainage uh, system is gone. Um, I've uh, talked to council for 295 Eastern Ave, I've raised our concern, uh, we do not have all the information right now. Uh, what we are understanding at this point is that it will not be physically possible to tie into their new drainage system as it is because the catch basins are too low. Uh, we need to have a full assessment done by a civil engineer and we're hoping to have this done uh, before the next uh, planning board meeting which will take place on September 27th. Uh, by then, uh, we, hope, we are hoping that the engineer will be able to answer the following questions. Uh, what will it take to tie into the new drainage system? What needs to be done? Uh, number one. Number two, uh, is there any other way uh, for the property to, train, to drain? Uh, and we need to know how that can be done. Um, obviously, we cannot have a property with no drainage system. This will create flooding issues, safety issues, and so forth. And number three, we need to find out from that civil engineer if the proposed uh, drainage system, uh, um, as it is proposed right now, will actually uh, have an impact and create flooding issues into uh, uh, 305 Eastern Ave. Um, I will let Mr. Hogg uh, talk more about the drainage uh, system as it is right now. Uh, I do have a comment though about, um, and Madam uh, Chairman, you uh, pointed out that there is no um, detailed information of how the public, uh, not necessarily the public, but how the traffic will be mm -hmm. in that proposed redevelopment. Uh, and we're talking about different things. We're talking about trucks going back and forth and we're also talking about the public, so pedestrians, uh, walk in, walking into the property. Uh, and it's not clear to us right now uh, how this will be done and where they will go. Uh, there has been a mention of a uh, loop, so uh, apparently people or trucks will be able to go from one way to another through a loop. Uh, the concern I have right now is that uh, if, if, if that's gonna be the case, uh, pedestrians will go through uh, Glyptol's property. There is a, uh, a driveway that is owned by Glyptol on which 295 Eastern Ave currently has a limited uh, easement right to park and drive its trucks. There is no uh, right uh, given for other purposes. Um, so we will need some more information uh, with respect to, again, the traffic, how it will be done. Um, and I will let okay. Mr. Thank Hogg you. give you heard more that, information. Guys? Okay. Sir, please introduce yourself and tell Hi, us. Hi, uh, my name is Ben Hogue. I uh, run the paint factory at 305 Eastern Ave. Um, 
As Natalie alluded to, we are currently tied into the present drainage system that uh, runs through 295 Eastern Ave. Um, it's not really highlighted on any of the plans that have been submitted that I can see at this point. Um, I think the existing conditions sort of miss it, but um, I think on the permit site plan on C3, there is a pipe in, um, that is, looks to be removed on the kind of the upper right-hand corner, which is the actual outflow pipe that services the properties right now. Um, as was alluded to earlier, our catch basins are, are pretty low. Uh, 305 Eastern is probably the lowest point along Eastern Ave, along Chelsea Creek. Um, and the new proposed uh, drainage system uh, will elevate the, the drainage on 295 such that we have no physical possibility uh, to drain out. And it's gonna create a considerable flooding uh, point for us where we'll be unable to use our building or operate safely. I don't know if there's, we can go to maybe s slide 12. Um, slide 12 down here, slide 12. I get it. Oh, which one is slide 12? Yeah. You don't know Sorry, that. you just keep going. I think it was. Oops, sorry, right here, um, the site walk. Uh, where all those people are gathered right now, that's basically, that's 305 Eastern Ave property on the left. Uh, that'll be underwater. Um, and it'll be underwater, not by inches, by feet. Um, so, you know, this is what's been told to us by the civil engineer who looked at the plans briefly. We haven't had him over to the site. We're trying to get someone over to, to help us. Um, Outside of that, I think there's been some allusions to Eastern Ave extension. Uh, there is no Eastern Ave extension. That's 305 Eastern Ave property. I don't know why Google Maps has put that on as Eastern Ave extension, but there is no such thing. Um, happy to answer any questions if you have no, any. Th thank you. That's appreciated. And I was thank remiss you. in not indicating that we had a written, we had a written uh, notification from Ms. Solomon that she was going to be. She had some concerns, which she has articulated here, but this will be part of the record. Could I, could I please have a copy of that? I wasn't given a copy of that. You certainly may. A copy was given to me, Jackie. You can have that one. Nope. Yep, wait. This is, is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? Again, this won't be your only opportunity. If you have other things, you can mention them next, uh, and you can hopefully work to get some of the answers that you're looking for. That being said, this... Uh, Madam Chair, may I respond to some of the assertions made? They come as a surprise to us. Well, why don't you talk about, well, you can, but it'd probably be more effective for you to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one than to have it through us. I've, but I've, well, I've, that's the point, is I've actually been meeting in good faith with them for some time, so I'm surprised at some of the assertions. Just to be Just again, for the record, just because it's being taped, just remind us for your name again, just to say it again for the purposes of, just answer, who, say, respond to your name. And yes. Just, my name is Jay Argument. I'm the attorney uh, for the applicant. I'm with Ruben Junius and Rose. Uh, to be absolutely clear, th there is no property right possessed by 305 Eastern Avenue, as I've discussed with opposing counsel, for them to drain on our property. Uh, we don't accept that they have any such right, uh, nor could they have a prescriptive right because it's uh, uh, registered land. Uh, now, in good faith, we've been working with them and we will make our engineer available if such time as they raise the grade of their property, if they possibly want to tie into us, we'll ex examine that. But there is no right for them to drain across our private property. Thank you. That's outside the purview of the board for decision, but it's appreciated that you Thank are you. share it with us. Thank you. It, it's not, no, it's, this, is not a, this is not a public forum for debate between the other parties. You're welcome to do that off of unless it's relevant to the decision we at the board have to make right now, the, an elevation is clearly not our decision or the legal rights around them. So um, that being said, this will go in front of the planning board on September 27th and we'll be back here on 10-11. Yeah, you go? Yeah, can I ask three more questions? Of course you may. Um, I didn't see where the trash is gonna go. The trash? Yeah. Jim? Where's the trash? 
Yeah, it's on, it's on site. I mean, I, I, I can't point to it on the plan, but, but when we come back in October and when we go to the uh, planning board for site plan review, we will clearly delineate that. And we heard from the chair as well, we need to show some truck movements to make sure that they all work. And, and, and also one of the things to be helpful, the parking plan is what's, what's designated for the public, public yeah. and what's designated, you know, and, and also to ensure because of the obviously truck traffic that'll be coming here, how it's gonna be sure that the public is protected from yes. the trucks is in the parking. Absolutely. I would like to see that. And the other one is where the delivery is gonna go. I yes, don't know if, it, if it, that goes through the traffic, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah that's traffic. part, I think the traffic, like how it would Right, uh, I, I should have said that there are 17 uh, loading docks or, or uh, bays so we'll, we'll show those and how they'll be coordinated as, as the chair suggested. And um, last one, do you have a, a snow removal? Are you planning to have it on the site? If, if, if so, where is it gonna go? Where is, where's it gonna stay in the site? I don't have that answer, but I, I absolutely will for the planning board and for you in October. I don't know that. Great. Right. Thank, you. Thank okay. you. See you in October. Don't get the planning board the 27th. The next case in front of us is 2022-23, 8 Wells Wesley Street, John Scalaro, Wesley. and a, Wesley, it's Wesley, I just said it. Oh, you said Wesley. Wesley, okay. That's, that's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? John, who's, isn't it John Wesley and something? The, does anybody uh, here who's going to need transport, uh, uh, translation <laughs> services for the next two cases? There being none, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's with Wesley Street, John, is that how it's yeah, pronounced? Wesley. This is not, we will not be making a decision on this today because it is the first um, time we'll be hearing it. It will be going yeah. to the planning board on the 27th of September and back here on October 11th. Councilor? Good evening, Madam Chair, well, members of the board, Anthony Rossi on behalf of the petitioner. Sitting to my left is petitioner John Scalaro, who is the owner of the uh, building in place. Uh, John has actually been operating his masonry operation there for almost 40 years, right, John? Um, so he currently, it's a one-story building. Um, it's behind the, on the parkway where they did that stucco brand new building a few years back. I think there's a church in it um, right off the parkway. And the one-story building, what he's looking to do, if you look at the plans, currently there's two garage bays. It's a brick facade building, one story, and in that, Brick facade on the first floor. They have four offices, storage, and they park two cars inside where the bays are. He doesn't really, they don't really bring material, the masonry, so they go to sites. So everything gets dropped off to sites. It's really where they run their operation. They'll keep some equipment inside. When I say equipment, masonry tools or what have you, and their four offices. What he's looking to try to do is, is if you look at the plans, he's looking just to take a portion of the first floor. Um, onto the second floor. So what he's looking to do is build a half story, like half of the building uh, footprint, about 1,500 square feet on the front part of the building. So he can move his offices on the four offices in the conference room on the ground level up to a new portion of the second floor. It's half the footprint of the existing building, sitting on the same footprint of the existing building. Uh, by doing so, now he can move the offices that they share with his vehicles, what have you, and equipment and put them into a nicer office on the second floor. There's only four people that work with the company on site. John, and he has one of his foremans here, and, um, and secretary and, um, and another office employee. Essentially three are usually on site every day, which is John. The foreman's usually go into job sites daily. So with a look, by doing so, they have a nicer office in place. Uh, also, instead of having two cars parked on the ground level, going this way, but now we're moving the offices from the ground level facade, they can actually park four tandem inside and still have storage to put their, you know, So that was, that's the plan is to move it up there and then make it available for parking? Correct. Okay. So essentially they're not adding really more offices, they just bring in the offices on a second floor and give a better environment for himself. And they're taking some, and they're moving some parking indoors as opposed to outdoors. Correct, outdoors. right now there's two parking indoor. They would, now they, if they wanted to, right, right now they really usually use three cars and um, Nick who owns the property across the street, he has a lot and he lets them park if they ever need a spot over there. So if they ever need to, especially when it snows, they can actually put now four parking spaces inside and still utilize whatever you need for their, their storage for their masonry items and now they have nice offices on the second floor. And all the surrounding properties, other than the one that's on the parkway, 
a currently two stories, but it's more of a residential area surrounding him, but then it turns a little bit commercial in front of him. So it's sort of like one of those properties. But it's not changing a use, it's not changing, it's Nothing. not expanding its use, it's not. Nothing. So setbacks and the side yards violations are only on the same footprint. So it's existing non-conforming setback uh, violations. So he's not expanding the side yard setback existing or the front yard setback. He's only building on that footprint and he's not taking the whole entire floor because he doesn't need it. He only needs that portion that he uses for his office in a nice conference room. That's essentially what he's trying to do. And, 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 and actually it works with what the intent of the city is, is try to get a lot of off street parking off. By doing so, he can actually achieve that. And sometimes they, the people park on Wesley Street and so forth. Now it gives them the opportunity that if they want to, they can pull inside of this building. You can have an additional two more cars off street parking in the building. Any questions? Okay, this, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this? There being none, this is not, we're not closing the public participation portion of this. Ye, next month here, 27th Planning Board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a really good thing with us. And last but not least, I'm assuming it's you three kind people, 2022 24 519 Washington Ave, Lorraine T. Brown, for a variance seeking approval to subdivide the lot containing a single family dwelling structure with the proposed annex land to be combined with a property known as 13 Bell Street, which does not meet the current minimum lot size requirement. So there's a, the good and the bad of this is it's a variance, so we can vote on it today. The bad of it is that we're gonna have to walk through each of the variance requirements. And we know that they can be confusing, so we're here to help you. But why don't you talk to us first, introduce yourself, tell us where you live, and at, tell us what you're proposing to do. Like I said, my pull it, pull it, put this down so you can speak. There you, go. there you go, perfect. Uh, I'm, my name is Lorraine Brown, and I'm the owner of the property at 519 Washington Avenue. And this is where, this is the one that we're going to, I'm going to distribute, if with your permission, of course, to my brother and his wife. Uh, 60, I'm just going to give you a sh very short story. It's okay. It's a family affair. You've been here all night. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 64 years ago, my grandmother, who raised me and grandfather, I lived there with them, with, and I had a little three-year-old. So we wanted to put a fence up. But my father lived in the back. My, my mother, my father, and Joe, and the whole family lived in a house behind us. So what had happened was he didn't have enough room for a driveway. So my grandmother allotted him enough room. So we put the fence up so he would have enough room. But we want to make it legal now, you know, because I'm getting older and we're all getting older and it would be better if we could. So you, what you're saying is right now this unofficial use of the driveway, but you want to make, you want to codify want to the use of the driveway, John, am I understanding that, that that's, correctly? That's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. It's this area right here. So that, so and what, and that belongs to who? That belongs to 519? I, I, yes, yeah, there's 519. There's two lots at 519. There, mm -hmm. there were narrow lots in those days. So, so what you're saying, and you want, so right now, what does the law say? That the parking belongs? Right now, this is the 519 parcel right here. Uh-huh, okay. What they would do is move this property line to here. To so that right. what's on 13 Bell is actually yeah. Yeah. now has the parking lot. Correct, that's so the you want to officially move the So you want to officially move the lot line over yeah. to the other side yeah. of, the, of the parking, the, the driveway. That's correct. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? And, it, and the reason before it's before you is because it would reduce the size of the lot, so therefore it's a uh, variance for lot size. Okay. So, sir, do and you want to speak? Want to tell us your name and address, please? And they need to do this before they can go to the planning board and get an approval not required plan signed off. Okay. Sir? My, my name's Joseph Carroll, and I own the property at 13 Bell Street, my wife Mary Ann and I. And um, this was just a, an, years ago, as my sister mentioned, informally um, gave the property to my dad, which owned the house then, and um, all we want to do is make it formal. Nothing's going to change. The fence ain't going to change. Well, if you ever chose to sell it or something, you're going to need to have it legally distributed in because any case, Because we're both too. getting old now, and, and if somebody <laughs> leaves us, me or my sister, and somebody else buys the property, and then it could cause a... Know. 
you want to clear up any problems before, before any other start. problems right. exist. It's, it's Very right. kind of you. You could have left it for the people who were buying the house. But um, <laughs> He's my baby brother, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's always your baby brother, right, no matter what. <laughs> I was the baby of the family. Uh, then, you know, it's a good thing to be. So um, do we have any questions about this? Yeah, so the driveway will be in Bell Street or Washington? The, the driveway will now become part of Bell Street. Bell and not Washington, correct? Correct. That's right. So they're, they're just moving the lot line. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they're, they're not changing anything other than moving the no, line. So you basically line. have two non-conforming lots that again become two non-conforming lots for all correct. intents and purposes. Well, it's a non-conforming lot, but it'll become an even more it, but, yeah, non -conforming but, but, but one, <laughs> yep. you know, they're still, okay, so the thoughts? So, so before, so because it's a variance, and we'll help with this, we have to walk through four conditions. And you have to meet each one of the conditions before legally we can allow us to even consider it. So if you don't meet them, then we just can't provide it. It's not our choice, it's the law. So we're gonna help you with it because they're not easy and they're kind of confusing. So if you don't understand, don't be afraid to ask. And I talk really fast, so if I talk too fast, just tell me, slow down. So the first, the first thing we have to determine is that this variance is sought because of the soil conditions, the shape or topography of such land or structure and especially affecting such land or structure, but not effective, affecting generally the zoning structure in which it's located. So what you're asking for this moving is going to, you, you're really doing that because the lot is the lot. You're not proposing to make any changes to the lot. That's you correct. are literally making this change and there's nothing you can do. You, you, can't, you, can't meet any, you can't meet the variances because there's no more lot space to go. Mm -hmm. There's no place to go. That's correct. Yes? So yes, you got that one. The first, the next one, a literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. So it sounds to me like if you ever tried to sell this, it would be very confusing and very difficult and probably financially difficult for you guys to deal with that. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. It yes. could be. Yeah. So. Okay. Desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. This one's easy. Nobody's going to get upset, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be any different than what currently exists. The only people who are going to know it's changed are the, the office where you register this, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. So there is no harm to the public good. Mm -hmm. okay. And last, desirable relief, desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent of the purposes of this chapter. I hate this one. I hate trying to say this one. So basically, this, this is what, it's what, what kind of district is this? The residence one. The residence one, it's still a residence one. You're not changing it from an R1. It's, it's not gonna hurt. It's not getting in the way of the current zoning, correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. You have met all four of them. See, I, I tried to make that as easy as I could. That okay. being said, do we have a motion? Well, the, first of all, I, I, did, I, I have to officially say, is there anybody here who wishes to speak on this matter? There being none, I am closing the public participation portion of this hearing. Do I have a motion? I am or wait, wait, John. I'm John? suggesting two conditions. One, sure. the applicable standard, and that the uh, permit shall not be effective until uh, uh, approval not required plan has been endorsed by the planning board. And if you don't know what that means, talk to John after. You have to go to the planning board and get a special permit. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. You have to submit a plan showing the change for the planning board. They have to endorse it, and then you have to register it at the Registry of Deeds. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions on that, come and talk to John and yeah. Hector, okay? Because, I, again, it makes a lot of sense to them, and it doesn't always make sense to us. So that being said, so are you willing, first of all, are you willing to accept those conditions that John just talked about? There are certain standard conditions that are not difficult, I think that would not apply here, but that also you have to do this, with, you have to work with John so that you understand what to do with the planning board. The planning board, yeah. So are you okay to, is that okay with you, that you'll work out with them and so you'll properly register this after that with the Registry of Deeds? That, that's understood. Okay, that being said, do I have a motion? Joe? I make motion that case number 2022-24519 Washington Ave, Lorraine T. Brown uh, be approved as 
we articulated with the with our second second jo second on Marilyn. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so you got approval, but you still have to do the step that John said before you can. It's official, okay? Yeah. So work with work with the planning department. Call John and Hector and figure out how what the next step is to get this done properly, okay? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Do we have a mo Ricky, we're making a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, you go second. Marilyn, all in favor? Aye. Thank Eight you. 11. <laughs> Thank you very no, much. No.